be vitrifying some blastocysts now. So essentially, once we have biopsied blastocysts for PGS, the next step that could be required is vitrifying the blastocysts. So as we went through in our lectures, with day five blastocysts, there is an option of doing a day six transfer. Whereas with day six blastocysts, when you biopsy them, the only option is vitrification. So it's quite important that you have a solid vitrification program in your clinic if you want to consider doing PGS and protected on biopsy. Because essentially, this whole process has to be optimized in order to, for you to get good outcomes, okay? So um, the dish, for vitrification, uh, the different solutions, this, uh, there are three solutions that are needed for vitrification. The V1, which is just the basal solution without any cryoprotectant. V2, which has got a uh, moderate amount of cryoprotectant, which is ethylene glycol and DMSO. And V3, which is the vitrification solution, which has the maximum amount of cryoprotectant. So this whole dish has to be equilibrated at 37 degrees for one hour. Okay, And usually when we do blastocyst vitrification, especially after a biopsy, the cavity is collapsed. If the cavity is not collapsed and it's fully intact, such as your routine vitrification of blastocysts, we like puncturing the cavity by applying a laser shot at the junction of two trophectoderm cells, okay? So for all our standard vitrification of embryos, we always puncture the cavity. We believe that the success rate that we get is because of the less intracellular volume of water. Cryopreservation is, the success behind cryopreservation is draining the intracellular water, okay? So we collapse the cavity by applying a laser pulse at the junction of two trophectoderm at the opposite end of the inner cell mass, because you want to be well away from the inner cell mass, you'll immediately see a reaction and the embryo will collapse. And I'm happy to show you the collapse of a blastocyst as well on the laser since we have so many blastocysts. So, once we get the blastocysts, and essentially these are ready to be vitrified. So your first drop, your V1, is just to wash, okay? So you wash the embryo and obviously you're doing this whole process on a hot plate because you, or warm plate because you have uh, essentially warmed this dish up for uh, one hour before mm. use at 37. No need for gas, yeah? Just no need warming. for gas, just warming, yeah. So after warming, uh, uh, after warming the dish, you put the embryo, um, just wash it in V1, and then put it in solution V2, okay, with minimal carryover for two minutes, okay, at 37. The cover is oil? No, no, no. just... Warm plate, warm plate at 37 okay. uh, with the dish. So, two, sorry, two minutes you have your um, embryo in there okay. dehydrating. Okay. In, the second in the second solution. After two minutes, when you've got about 30 seconds remaining, you would make drops of V3. Okay. Okay, pick up the embryo, release it in first and empty the pipette because the whole idea is you want to wash away any V2 which is being carried over. Okay, so empty the pipette again, move the embryo to V3. This process should not take more than 30 to 35 seconds. Once you're ready, and that, this is your carrier in which the embryo will be. You load the embryo in less than one microliter medium. Okay. And then immediately
immediately, obviously, we don't have liquid nitrogen here, mm -hmm. but we would have liquid nitrogen. Mm -hmm. Okay, and we'll pretend this is our liquid nitrogen. Immediately after loading, you immerse it in liquid nitrogen. Before we cover. Correct. So you're already in liquid nitrogen. Then you pick up your cover, fill liquid nitrogen. Okay. When it's filled under liquid nitrogen, you place it in and okay. dunk it in. Okay? So that is your embryo vitrified. So two minutes in V2, less than one minute till it hits liquid nitrogen in V3. The entire process at 37 degrees. Now this is only for this particular product with Coke. With Kitazato, this is a different protocol because they will suggest you to do a much longer ES step up to 12 or 15 minutes in ES because they don't advocate puncturing of the cavity as well. So it's again an inverse relationship that if you want to minimize the exposure to cryoprotectant, you have to remove all the water by puncturing the cavity and raising the temp temperature of your cryoprotective media. Because Kitazato is all done at room temperature, so i.e. the temperature is lower and hence the permeation of the cryoprotectant is slower. And hence you have to increase the amount of time your embryo spends in that first solution. Okay? Both systems work very well depending what you want to use and your personal preference. 